We're counting down the top 10 most extreme awesome ancestors to find out which modern animal has the greatest granddaddy of them all. We'll reveal some really big family secrets when ancestors are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places. And extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual and the most extraordinary on Animal Planets, the most extreme. Number 10. What was life like one million years BC? Well, according to Hollywood, our ancestors had fur bikinis and fought giant reptiles. While humans were never chased by dinosaurs, in the past, there really were monsters. And some of these giant animals have much smaller descendants still living today. Our countdown takes us on a journey through time to find the greatest granddaddy of them all. And we begin with the elephant. It's the largest animal walking the planet today. And yet, compared to one of its ancient ancestors, this jumbo-sized mammal is just a pipsqueak. To find our first contender, you need to wind back the clock 10,000 years to meet the giant star of the Ice Age. The mammoth is number 10 in the countdown because it could have been 50% larger than its closest surviving relative, the modern elephant. Standing 13 feet tall and weighing over eight tons, mammoths once roamed both North and South America. But it wasn't just their body size that made them different to modern elephants. Mammoth tusks were far bigger and more curved, perhaps to scrape snow off their food. Some mammoths were also covered in a 20-inch long fur coat, perfect insulation from the freezing temperatures of the Ice Age. The ears were the only part of a mammoth that were smaller than those found on a modern elephant. That's because, in cold weather, it pays to have bigger bodies and smaller appendages. Imagine if we spent a few thousand years living in an ice age. The shape of an animal's body affects the amount of heat loss to the air. And since most heat is lost through the skin, it's a good idea to expose as little skin as possible. That's why in cold climates, animals tend to have compact bodies, short limbs, a small nose, and tiny ears. It would also help if, just like a mammoth, we had a layer of insulating fat and grew a very thick fur coat. So how do we know so much about these extinct animals? Well, in the Arctic, they keep turning up, often thanks to gold miners washing away the frozen ground. This tusk could be 20,000 years old, 
and yet it and other mammoth remains have been perfectly preserved by being buried deep in the permafrost. Scientists can even examine stomach contents to find out what grasses mammoths were eating. Some of these plants are still alive today, and this has led a group of researchers in Siberia to try to wind back the clock. It's a project that sounds like something straight out of a Spielberg movie. Welcome to not Jurassic, but Pleistocene Park. Russian scientists have already started work returning 60 square miles of savanna back to the Ice Age by repopulating it with plants and animals that would have lived there 10,000 years ago. Unfortunately, we can't bring the mammoth back from the dead. And while it would have towered over its modern descendants, as our countdown continues, we'll discover that there can be even greater size differences between the animals we know today and their awesome ancestors. Number nine. In the forests of South America, you think you'd be safe from predators if you're 100 feet above the ground. But here, there's terror in the skies. The harpy eagle is one of the most powerful birds of prey in the world, but it's been recorded carrying away a 15-pound howler monkey. This harpy eagle chick will one day have a seven-foot wingspan. That's relatively short compared to other eagles, but it gives it the speed and maneuverability necessary for flying through the forest. Those talons are the size of grizzly bear claws and can easily crush a monkey's skull. But even this powerful predator is no match for another eagle that ruled the skies just 2,000 years ago. The forests of New Zealand were once home to the largest eagle the world has ever seen. Flying in to number nine in the countdown is Hast's eagle. It was 60% heavier than a harpy with a nine-foot wingspan. Its legs and talons were far stronger than a modern eagle's, which meant it could hunt another extinct animal that weighed in at more than 400 pounds. Moa were huge flightless birds that browsed on the forest floor. Since New Zealand was once a land without predatory mammals, the eagle had no competition. So the bigger it grew, the bigger the prey it could kill. It's this diet of enormous birds that let the host's eagle grow into number nine in the countdown. It became so big that it must have terrified another kind of two-legged prey. The first humans to arrive in New Zealand must have seemed like a tasty treat to a giant eagle. And yet it was the humans that survived. Because when they cleared the forests and killed off the moa, this awesome ancestor disappeared forever. And that would have made collecting firewood a whole heap more relaxing. If you think it would have been scary living in a world with big birds and massive mammoths, just imagine what it would have been like to go swimming with a fish that could eat jaws for breakfast. And later, we'll travel back to a time when giant insects ruled the world. That's coming up next on... Number eight. 
Our countdown of the most extreme awesome ancestors continues in Africa, where it's hard to sleep tight, because it's not just the bed bugs that bite. These are driver ants, and they're looking for food. If you can't get out of their way, driver ants have been known to kill humans. A colony of driver ants contains 20 million jaws. And while they may be blind, thanks to their extreme sense of smell and touch, they have no trouble tracking down prey. In a single raid, a colony can dismember more than 100,000 animals. It's awesome destruction. Yet these workers are little more than an inch long. Imagine what would happen if these ants were twice the size, just like their awesome ancestors that once swarmed across Europe 49 million years ago. Crawling in to number eight in the countdown are prehistoric giant ants. They were the biggest ants in history, the queen having a wingspan of more than five inches. That's bigger than some hummingbirds. The world had never seen anything like these deadly swarms. Never before had insects ganged up to overwhelm much bigger prey. So why were these ancient animals so much bigger than their modern descendants? Was there something in the air? Well, it seems that the answer could be yes. The amount of oxygen in the atmosphere has changed dramatically over the history of the planet. If we traveled back 300 million years, we'd find the air contained almost twice as much oxygen than there is today. And this could make bugs grow much bigger, thanks to the way they breathe. Take a close look at an ant, and you'll see there's a row of holes along its abdomen, which leads into a network of tiny tubes. Since it doesn't have lungs, it has to rely on air diffusing through these pipes into the body. The longer the pipe, the less oxygen gets into the system. And that's one reason why you don't get ants the size of elephants. However, imagine what happens if you change the concentration of oxygen in the air. Twice as much oxygen should be able to diffuse twice as far down the tubes. In theory, this means the insect would be able to grow much bigger. Perhaps with a little more oxygen, modern ants would one day become as large as their prehistoric ancestors. Although they'll never be as big as the monsters imagined by Hollywood. next contender would be quite at home in horror movies, since it would have no trouble swallowing the world's fiercest fish. If you think that fighting ants and biting birds are scary, still to come, we'll meet an ancient Australian monster that still gives people nightmares today. Later, we'll dig up the truth about a tooth. That's coming up on Animal Planets. Number seven. Just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water, along comes the next contender in our countdown of the natural world's most awesome ancestors. Its modern descendant is the most terrifying predator in the sea. The 
great white shark can bite off 50 pounds of meat as easily as you might take a mouthful of an overripe peach. The movie Jaws did irreparable damage to the great white shark's reputation. But imagine if Spielberg decided to make a film about the shark's long-lost ancestor. Our skinny body is usually less than six feet long. A great white shark can be 20 feet long and weigh two tons. But 15 million years ago, there was a shark that was 50 feet long and weighed 50 tons. With jaws six feet wide, it could swallow a human and a great white shark in a single gulp. Swimming in to number seven in the countdown is Megalodon. Today, you can still find its fossilized teeth washed up on beaches. They're easy to identify since they're up to seven inches long. Unfortunately, the Megalodon's body hasn't been preserved as well as its teeth. Sharks are made mostly of cartilage, a rubbery substance that doesn't make for great fossils. But paleontologists can tell a lot about a megalodon just from its teeth. Imagine what it would be like to meet this monster. Scientists believe that megalodon looked like a great white shark on steroids. They are, after all, pretty closely related. Those massive jaws would have taken Volkswagen-sized bites out of the large whales that were alive at the same time. Scientists are unsure why Megalodon disappeared from the sea about one and a half million years ago. One theory is that whales became trickier to catch by migrating into colder, shark-free waters. They certainly wouldn't want to move close to shore, because that was home to our next terrifying contender. Number six. This is a crocodile. It can grow over 20 feet long and weigh nearly a ton. It's been reputed to have the strongest bite on the planet, estimated at nearly 4,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. For over 220 million years, the water's edge has been ruled by different kinds of crocodiles. And the biggest of them all once lived in the waters of sub-Saharan Africa. It was as long as a city bus and ate dinosaurs for breakfast. Roaring in to number six in the countdown is Sarcosuchus. A reptile so big that it could swallow an adult human whole. More than twice the size of the largest modern crocodile, Sarcosuchus also ambushed prey at the water's edge. 
Its six-foot-long jaws were studded with over 100 teeth, including a row of enlarged, bone-crushing incisors. A computer animation of Sarcosuchus can make it seem larger than life. And yet, today, all that remains of this awesome ancestor is a few bones and some enormous teeth. But not even Sarcosuchus's mighty jaws can compete with our next contender. We're nearly halfway through our countdown, and already we've seen some truly awesome ancestors. But could any of them stand in the way of the tyrant Lizard King? And later, can you really discover your own ancient past using some... Number five. It's hard to believe that the awesome ancestor of these little balls of fluff is one of the world's most famous predators. The cubs are living in a house in Nashville, a long way from their home in the jungles of Asia. They're being raised in captivity because they're one of the rarest cats on the planet, the clouded leopard. You can identify them by taking a close look at their teeth. Those canine teeth will one day be two inches long. That's the same size as those of a tiger, even though the clouded leopard's body is ten times smaller. It can open its jaws wider than any other feline, and it's one of the best climbers in the cat family. It has flexible ankle joints that can rotate backwards, which makes the clouded leopard one of the few animals able to climb down trees head first. In the wild, adult clouded leopards ambush their prey from the treetops, leaping onto the victim's back and delivering one killing bite. However, it will be some time before these cubs are ready to bring down large cattle and deer. Its fangs are lethal weapons, but they're nothing compared to the dental work of the animal at number five in the countdown. DNA analysis suggests that the clouded leopard's closest relative can be found not in a forest, but in a concrete jungle. Welcome to Los Angeles. It's the last place you'd expect to find one of America's most famous predators. But take a trip down Wilshire Boulevard, and you can look through a window into the past. This is tar. When it started seeping to the surface 40,000 years ago, it became a death trap. Animals that wandered into even a shallow pool could get so stuck that they eventually died from thirst or starvation. For the paleontologists working at the La Brea tar pits, the best thing about the black goop is that it preserves bones, especially the bones of the big cat with the biggest teeth. Roaring in to number five in the countdown is the saber-toothed cat. Its eight-inch canines were four times longer than its modern descendant, the clouded leopard. The saber-toothed cat probably looked like a lion and was far too big to climb trees like a leopard. Instead, it relied on stealth to get close enough to launch a devastating attack. It's thought that the saber-tooths use their canines to stab or rip at soft tissues in the throat or stomach. 
Compared to its awesome ancestor, the clouded leopard's teeth are an orthodontist's dream. And since even this extraordinary overbite can't compete with the monstrous mouths coming up in the countdown, it's well worth hanging around a little longer. Number four. Australia is home to some strange and terrible creatures. Yet far scarier animals greeted the Aboriginal people when they first arrived 40,000 years ago. Today, they still tell stories of these monsters from the dream time. And the worst of them all was the bunyip. <laughs> It never appears in Aboriginal art for fear that its spirit would live on through its image. When Europeans arrived, they too returned from the outback with tales of a terrifying monster. The bunyip was rumored to look something like this. Meet the wombat. Today, it doesn't look much like a monster. Modern wombats are peaceful vegetarians and are only about as big as a bulldog. These lumbering marsupials are usually nocturnal, and during the day, they rest in burrows. To find their awesome ancestor, you need to travel to a much bigger hole in the ground. This is one of the simplest death traps in the world. For animals that fall in, there's simply no way out. Their bones lie undisturbed and are an amazing record of Australia's ancient past. Tens of thousands of specimens have been recovered from 93 different species, many of which lived through the last ice age. It's also the last resting place of the awesome ancestor at number four in the countdown. These skulls belong to the largest marsupial that ever lived in Australia. It's a wombat called Diprotodon. This huge herbivore disappeared from the fossil record about 35,000 years ago, soon after humans arrived in Australia. Could it be that this mega mammal was the bunyip that once terrified the Aboriginal people? It's certainly an impressive size, but it would have been far less dangerous than our next contender. The next contender in our countdown of awesome ancestors is the Lizard King. Today's ruling reptiles are without doubt Komodo dragons. These battling males are the world's largest lizards, measuring up to 10 feet long and weighing over 350 pounds. Dragons are at the very top of this island's food chain. Even a 2,000 pound water buffalo isn't safe. Just one bite can inject a toxic brew of bacteria that eventually causes fatal blood poisoning. Dragons are armed with large, curved, serrated teeth for ripping their prey apart.
The Komodo dragon is both a hunter and a scavenger, just like another giant reptile that once ruled America 70 million years ago. Thundering into number three in the countdown is Tyrannosaurus rex. Its scientific name means Tyrant Lizard King. And while it certainly looked like a tyrant, it actually wasn't a lizard, but a close cousin. T-Rex was 39 feet long and weighed up to 10,000 pounds. That's almost 30 times the size of a Komodo dragon. The Tyrannosaurus jaws were 10 times more powerful than any living carnivore. No wonder people once thought this was the world's most ferocious predator. be that like the Komodo dragon, T-Rex was actually a better scavenger than hunter. Modern scavengers like vultures and hyenas have a highly developed sense of smell, and scans on fossilized tyrannosaur skulls reveal an overdeveloped olfactory bulb, the part of the brain responsible for smell. And its tiny front legs, smaller than a human arm, would have been no use for holding prey. We may never know for certain whether T-Rex was a hunter, scavenger, or both. Because reconstructing the behavior of extinct animals is difficult. Especially when you can't compare them to their modern relatives, thanks to visitors from outer space. Sixty-five million years ago, the tyrant lizard king disappeared forever when a meteorite hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. However, the meteorite that wiped out the dinosaurs left the door wide open for our next awesome ancestor. Number two. In South America, there was a time when the land was ruled by a savage animal that ate saber-toothed cats for breakfast. Its descendants still hunt in the grasslands today. Meet the Serima. Just like its awesome ancestor, it prefers walking to flying. It uses heavily clawed feet and a robust beak to violently kick and peck small animals to death. Today, it stands three feet tall and weighs no more than three pounds. Its awesome ancestor was much, much bigger. Imagine being chased by a 350-pound bird that could run twice as fast as any human. It was armed with four-inch claws and a two-foot-long head that was practically all beak. No wonder this flightless hunter was called the Terror Bird.
With the extinction of the dinosaurs, the terror bird grew to become one of the top predators in South America, even capable of taking on saber-toothed cats. It's number two in the countdown because it was over 300 times the size of its modern descendant. However, there was another awesome ancestor on the plains of South America that towered over the terror bird. At more than 700 times the size of its modern descendant, it was the greatest granddaddy of them all. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal was a bigger blast from the past. It's number one, and it's coming up next on Animal Planets, the most extreme. The modern descendant of the most extreme awesome ancestor in the countdown can be found hanging around in the forests of the Amazon. It's the sloth. It usually weighs about 10 pounds, and two-thirds of that can be the contents of its stomach. The leaves it eats provide very little nutrition and don't digest easily so it uses a very large, specialized, slow-acting stomach to break down the tough vegetation. The digestive process can take more than a month to complete. That's why the sloth only needs to make its way down to the forest floor once a week to go to the toilet. It's very particular about its bathroom habits, just like its awesome ancestor that once went to the toilet in this cave in Nevada. This poo is 11,000 years old and was deposited by an ancient herbivore that was big, very big. The super pooper was the giant ground sloth. It stood nearly 20 feet tall and weighed as much as a mammoth. It's number one in the countdown because it was 750 times bigger than its descendant hanging from trees today. While both sloths used their claws to hang onto branches, the giant ground sloth could use its 20-inch claws to rip trees in half. By analyzing DNA samples taken from giant ground sloth dung, scientists have confirmed that it's most closely related to the South American three-toed sloth. However, Paleontologists are not the only ones using DNA to uncover awesome ancestors. In San Francisco, Dr. Jason Eshelman from Trace Genetics helps people follow their family tree back hundreds of generations. And all you need is a little sample of DNA. DNA is the molecule, exists in virtually every cell of every organism, every bird, every flower, every person that provides the blueprints or code for how that bird, flower, or person is put together biologically. All humans share more than 99% of their genetic code. But every so often, a small piece of DNA mutates. It's these harmless mutations that makes us all unique. By comparing these tiny differences, Dr. Eshelman and his team can create a map of who we're related to and where we came from. When somebody is interested in investigating their ancestry through DNA, it's a very simple process. We take a sample of them, 
painless method. We take a cotton swab, a glorified Q-tip, and they can just scrub off a few cells from inside of their mouth, mail it to us. We can take the bits of DNA that are on that swab, purify it, analyze it, and compare it to DNA from people all over the world to get an idea of where the DNA that was on that swab in their cheek came from back throughout human history. When using DNA to look at ancestry, there are surprises. Somebody who thinks that they might be entirely European in origin may be surprised to find out that they have genes that are also shared with people in Eastern Asia, or genes that are also shared with people in Africa. We're all fairly closely related when you get right down to it. And while the giant ground sloth is also fairly closely related to its modern descendants up in the trees, it's much, much bigger. No other animal in the countdown has such an enormous difference in size. That's why, when it comes to awesome ancestors, the giant ground sloth really is the most extreme. <laughs>